Good morning and welcome everyone to Creative Mornings Muscat. This is our sixth event, which means it's our half birthday. Uh, it's been a little over six months since our first event and what a six months it has been for us, for the world, for everyone. <laughs> uh, I think it's been a very interesting year so far and we always want to move forward with a bit of optimism and a bit of, you know, um, positive energy and positive vibes. And hopefully this event will do that for you. I want to welcome anyone who's calling in from outside of Oman. This is our first English uh, event. So we're expecting people from our international audience to join. So if this is your first time in Creative Mornings Masqat, welcome to Masqat. Uh, <laughs> um, it's so nice to have you with us. So before we begin, just a few housekeeping. Uh, we're going to start with a few housekeeping things. We'll do an icebreaker. Then we'll move on to our main event. And after our main event, because this is our uh, half birthday, we will hear from our lovely, supportive um, uh, sp local sponsors. And they will just speak for a few minutes before we finish off the event. Um, so first, housekeeping rules. We encourage participation as much as you can. You can write in the chat. You can jump in. You can. Um, you can sign something to us. Uh, I know you're all muted, but we can see you, we can see your faces, we can see your reactions. So the first thing would be, I would encourage everyone to open their cameras, turn your cameras on so we can see your lovely faces, uh, and you can interact with us through the cameras. You can snap, you can clap, you can smile, you can laugh, we will be able to see that, and that's a way we can interact with you. Um, second of all, this is a great chance while I'm doing housekeeping, if you want to grab some coffee, grab some tea, water, whatever, the drink of your choice, you can just run to your kitchen quickly and grab something. Um, it would be nice for all of us to have a communal breakfast, even if it's virtual. And yes, that's about it. We're going to learn how to use Zoom, which I'm sure most of you do. So uh, before we start, I would encourage all of you, the whole point of Creative Mornings is that we connect with one another, not just in the event, but even after the event, before the next event. So if you want, you can go to participants and click on your name and you can edit your name, uh, write your first name and then add your Instagram or Twitter or whatever it is handle, if you would like, if you want uh, people to know how to find you, uh, if you have a business account that you want to put, this is your chance to do so. Uh, so go ahead and do that. You can write your name and then add the handle. And if you hear from someone that you, you liked, you can follow them. They can follow you back, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we really want people to connect with one another even outside the event. So uh, take this time to write your name, uh, rename yourself, and add your at. Excellent, I see people are already doing that. That's wonderful. Okay, now we're gonna play an icebreaker. So in uh, the participants uh, page, there's an, a feature called raise hand. If the sentence applies to you, I'm gonna give you a bunch of sentence, you can click the raise hand. Once we're done for a few moments, you can lower your hand. We're going to ask a few questions and just find out more about you and uh, figure out a way to interact with one another. Okay, ready? Raise your hand if breakfast is your favorite meal of the day. Yes, excellent. Wow, wow, wow. Amazing. More people are raising their hands. Very nice. I wouldn't say it's half. I would say maybe 25%, uh, a bit more, around 15, 15 people, which is not bad. I expected more morning people since you're all here <laughs> this morning. But okay, everyone can, you can lower your hand. Breakfast people, you can lower your hand. Um, raise your hand if you are a midnight snack person. So if after 11 o'clock at night, 12 o'clock, you start to get hungry, you go grab a snack. 
<laughs> wow, the majority. <laughs> the majority are midnight snackers. Wow. <laughs> That's excellent. I'm glad you're being honest with us, which is something we like. You know, you're, the honesty is good. So almost half, half of the people are midnight snackers. Okay, you can lower your hands. Midnight snackers. Uh, okay, next. Raise your hand if you are still in your PJs or you're in your pajamas. Um, I know that at least half the people who have their cameras off are still in their pajamas. So whether you t raise your hand or not, we know the truth. So you don't have to lie to us. Yeah, I see that. Exactly, the same people who have their cameras off are raising their hands, wonderful. <laughs> Well, we're not here to judge, so if you feel comfortable to share your outfits with us, we're more than happy to see you and accept you as you are, so don't be shy. Um, okay, pajamas, uh, lower your hands. <laughs> okay. Raise your hand if you got dressed for this event. So now I'm looking at people with their cameras on. Yes, wonderful. Yep, exactly. As I predicted, if you have your camera on, you, get, you got dressed. Well done to you. Thank you for accepting our invitation and our request. It's so nice to, to feel like you're going somewhere, even if you're staying at home. Um, so it's nice to see that you made an effort. Thank you for that. Okay, uh, dressed people, you can lower your hand. Okay, last one. Raise your hand if you were ever too afraid to do something because of an insecurity. So if you ever felt insecure about something and it's, it's created an obstacle for you to achieve the thing you wanted to achieve. It's, uh, it's something I think we all go through. I go through it a lot. We doubt ourselves when we want to act on something, when we want to create something our head gets filled with all these negative thoughts. I, not everyone, surprisingly, like it's only, it's only half, almost 20 people. So I was expecting more people. So well done to the people who don't let anything stand in your way. Excellent. Okay, you can lower your hands. And that was the icebreaker. So uh, now we're gonna move on to a little about Creative Mornings. Um, we like to read our virtual manifesto which usually sets the tone and it sh shines a light on our values and what it means to be a part of the Creative Mornings community. So we like to read it out and I would like to ask for a volunteer, if you would like to read, and there's still four people who have their hands raised. So if you, if the four of you, okay, now they, now they put them down. So whoever would, would like to read, please, um, raise your hand if you would be if you'd like to read our manifesto. You just have to read off the screen. Straightforward, simple, but we would like to hear from someone. We'd write. We would like to hear someone's voice from our audience. So, if you'd like to read, okay. The first person is Hana. Hana El Breki. Uh, you can unmute yourself and read. Please welcome Hana. Uh, hello. Hello, we can hear can you. Hear, can you hear me? Yes. Um, okay, so uh, it says uh, everyone is creative. Uh, a creative life uh, requires bravery and action, honesty and hard work. We are here to support you, celebrate with you, and encourage you to make the things you love. We believe in the power of community. We believe in giving a damn. We, in giving a damn, yes. We believe in face-to-face -face connections in learning from others, in jazz hands, virtual claps, and virtual snaps. We bring together people who are driven by passion and purpose, confident that they will inspire one another and inspire change in neighborhoods and cities around the world. Everyone is welcome. No, you're still muted. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Mm 
Noor, can you unmute yourself first? Sorry. <laughs> My bad. We're going to clap for Hannah for reading that so wonderfully. So everyone, unmute your mics, and we're going to clap on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Thank you so much. Okay, that, that kind of worked. Thank you, Hannah. Yeah. Um, I saw some people, I unmuted them and then they muted themselves. <laughs> it's okay, we wanna hear you, even if it's just your claps. <laughs> Don't be shy. <laughs> um, okay, so that's our manifesto, that's our idea. Um, Creative Mornings has uh, begun really early on and it has spread all over the world. And now uh, within the pandemic, we are um, all sharing our virtual events. So if you want, you can go to the Creative Mornings website and find other events around the world that you can uh, attend. And now that you've registered with us, you will have access to the newsletter, to all the things that are happening within Creative Mornings. Before we start with our main speaker, we want to thank some of our global partners. MailChimp is our first global partner for marketing. MailChimp is an all-in-one marketing platform, and it has supported Creative Mornings from the very beginning. Um, there's a new member of the MailChimp family. It's called Courier Media, which is a bi-monthly magazine that provides um, real stories, insights, and more to help you work better. Um, and live smarter and be happier. If you want to be part of this magazine and uh, you can receive it every month or bi-monthly, um, you can go to couriermedia.co uh, slash sign up. So if you're interested in this magazine, you can do that now. That's what MailChimp is offering this month. Uh, WordPress is our second global sponsor and it's our global partner for web publishing. Um, this month, uh, there's a Creative Mornings initiative called Own Your Content, and it's coming back for its third season. What Own Your Content does, it it's it's introduces valuable insights um, on how we can honor our work by owning our content, especially in the face of uncertainty. Um, this initiative is presented um, with, with WordPress, so if you'd like to know more about it, you can visit the Creative Mornings website. Our third uh, global partner for project management is Basecamp. Um, it feels great to get an email from someone you care about or a newsletter you actually enjoy. Hey uh, is a new email service made by Basecamp. It's kind of like Gmail, but it's more carefully designed to make your inbox delightful again. So to get on this list, to try this email service, you can email iwant at hey.com or visit hey.com and tell Basecamp how you feel about email. It could be a love story. It could be any kind of story. Uh, inv invites have already begun going out uh, from June 15, and you can still take part of it uh, by emailing or visiting our website. Okay, and now on to the topic of the month, Insecure. Um, honestly, I was very excited for this event, uh, specifically about this theme, because one of my favorite shows is actually called Insecure, so I'm shamelessly advertising my favorite, event, my favorite show on, on TV right now, which is called Insecure. Um, insecurity shrinks our optimism, our beliefs, uh, and uh, our potential. It blinds us to how things really are or how things could be. We project our greatest fears when we, suc when we succumb to the negative ways we are conditioned to react. How can we start to overcome insecurity and strengthen ourselves? Um, so according to an author called uh, Leo Babauta, we can begin with a small dose of courage, a bit of courage just in small doses to start with. But it means, a courage means it's a willingness to set aside all the distractions for just a little bit and focus on what you're struggling with. Ignite a small dose of your courage and fiercely protect its flame. Commit to breaking one limiting belief at a time. With good work and focus, you'll soon be able to spread your wings and fly higher. So this brings me to our courageous speaker of the month, who's a spoken word artist, spoken word poet, 
uh, a published author, an aspiring producer, and he's also a musician. He's always been fascinated with music and lyricism, and he began his spoken word journey as a university student. He went on to win the Best Poet Award uh, from the 2017 edition of the Short and Sweet Poetry Festival. And he recently published a poetry collection called Provoke. So now I'm gonna unmute you all again, and please give a warm welcome to our speaker of the month, Ziad Gadu. So I'm unmuting everyone. Once your mic is unmuted, you can start chatting. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. I see so many familiar faces and um, it's an honor and a pleasure to be here. Very, very happy to be here. Um, hi. <laughs> We can hear some people. One second, yeah, let me mute everyone and then unmute you. The clapping uh, excited some people. Hold on, I'll unmute. There you go, Ziad. Yes, so good morning, everyone. Um, it's a real pleasure and I'm very excited to be here. Um, so first of all, my name is Ziad Gadu. I'm an Egyptian, currently in Cairo. Uh, I finished high school in Shreifat, Masrat. I lived in Oman a long time. My father is still there. So it's considered a second home to me. Uh, I then moved to university in Sharjah in the UAE, the American University, where I studied international relations. And then I left that, worked in marketing for a little bit. And then I went back to Egypt to do my military service. Finished three months ago, Corona hit, here we are. Um, I've been writing and performing for about five years. And um, I write a lot about these psychological issues that we face. Poetry, uh, especially performative poetry, spoken word, stage performative poetry, is poetry that is very vulnerable and um, speaks to a very personal kind of struggle. So when um, Noor approached me and told me, you know, if you wanna do this, uh, and the theme of the month is insecurity, I said, of course, as a performer, every time you step on stage, you're fighting an insecurity to get up whether it's the way you sound or the way you look or your material itself. So um, before we get into the conversation of insecurity, I'm gonna ask everybody to think of three things. Um, just kind of keep it in your mind. We're gonna get back to it later. But for now, I want you to think of three people in your life that matter to you or have affected you, three places that have affected you or changed the way you think, and three things you would like to change about yourself. Just in the back of your mind, don't worry about it for now. Um, now, insecurity, I think, in my very personal opinion, is just something that you fear. It's, a, it's, it's in prohibitly a fear that prohibits you. It's something that lives inside of your being. It's not usually a conscious thing, it's something that we kind of learn growing up. Sometimes it's planted in us. Most of us feel insecure sometimes. But people like me, for example, feel insecure almost always. And it can stem from your childhood. It can stem from a past traumatic experience. It could be something recent, a failure, a rejection, which can stem from a deep place of loneliness or social anxiety. And that kind of gives birth to a negative belief about yourself. It could also come from this idea of unhealthy perfectionism. If you have a parent in your house, um, your father or your mother, your grandmother or your aunt, or an older sibling uh, who's perfect, who's always just wants you to be perfect, no matter how good your grades are, no matter how good you look, no matter how perfect your room is, they always want you to try harder and they're never pleased. Or if you're in a relationship and you have a partner who's very critical of what you do all the time, that can give birth to insecurities. Um, and I think of all these things, we can arrange the, those into like three types, three main types of insecurities. Um, type one, I think, is the insecurity based on a failure or a rejection. Now, say um, you lose your job and that's, yeah, I mean, God forbid, something like that happens to you. Uh, when you lose your job, the moment you do it, you start thinking, what did I do wrong? 
because we are trained to correct ourselves first before questioning our environment. Because when we are out of options or we're out of things to blame, we blame ourselves. And that is one of the root causes or one of the root events that ripple effect into an insecurity that you usually live with. And a lot of people, because of just the fast pace of life, don't get time to undo these feelings. The feeling of shame or guilt or this haunting idea of failure that lowers your self-esteem. The second type is this lack of confidence that may stem from a social anxiety or from a need to distance yourself from society. Because we develop this um, fear of being evaluated. We don't want people to think that we're not good enough or we're not good looking enough or we're not loud enough or we're not educated enough or we're not rich enough or all these things. And so all this make us think, you know, maybe I shouldn't even participate in social gatherings. Maybe I shouldn't go to that um, gathering that my friend is having. Maybe I shouldn't go to that birthday party. Maybe I shouldn't go to that family gathering because all they're gonna do is ask me what my life is gonna be like. And then let's say you're going to an interview for a job, you are terrified. You probably don't sleep that night. You know what I mean? And I mean, bullying is another one of these things that causes insecurity because of a social atmosphere. But that will, we can discuss later on. But I just gave, I wanted to give like a general idea for now. Um, and the third type is, I think, the most destructive one, in my opinion, is this insecure kind of drive by perfectionism. The idea that we are supposed to be perfect all the time, that we're supposed to look a certain way and sound a certain way and achieve certain things all the time. Whether you are in a house where your mother expected you to get 100% all the time or with a partner who just expects constant, constant, constant communication and any little bit of kind of laziness, they'll blame you for it. And if a mistake happens in the relationship, it's your fault. So the idea of being the highest grade achiever, having the best job, having the perfect figure health-wise, uh, having the most beautiful house, the best car, all that. And that's kind of the third type, and those are the categories that fall underneath that. Now, when I started researching this conversation, and I kind of went through the types, I realized that there are a lot of questions that I needed to answer for myself first. And that's why I wanted to, first of all, let's pretend that we don't have insecurities. Let's pretend that everything's okay, that you feel good about yourself. And I wrote a poem about a day where I don't feel bad about myself. And it's called, On Those Days. And on those days, a mirror is kinder. We shine the brighter. We smile our shells wider, get comfortable with ourselves, away from the dust and all the broken shelves. We are finally outside these boxes, locked and loaded and ready to bust in, finally ready to adjust to just bin to must win. And on those days, we believe in stars. We hear the ceiling of scars, healing and closing in. We believe we are mighty and chosen. We juggle the pain with the medicine and wear rusty halos like we never meant a sin. And on those days, we bend the knees of heartache like a ballerina, swinging on swan lakes and waterfalls like you've never seen an angel waiting, hazel fading into white linen on heaven's gate, and you laying on the ground with your arms waving in you, a flower blooming, illuminating, despite the winter booming in you. The seasonal drought catching fish tanks of insecurities and doubt and you. Pray in the face of all you left. Pray with whatever is left of your sanity, with whatever is left of your faith. Pray in the face of all you hate, with whatever is left on your plate. Because on those days, we believe in the promises we never kept. And in those days, we believe in the cliffs we never leapt on. In those days, we believe this right here is the step that will give life to dreams. So reach deep beneath your breath and write. Write on those same pillows you dream on. Those same pillows you weep, those same sad songs, those same pillows you drift apart, then lash on. When they put your love to sleep, then forget to leave the flash on. It's up to you to rectify your own illusions. Wreck their lives. Call intrusion. Remember. 
with honesty comes confusion, comes holy water and diffusion. And when you hit them with that real honest version of the truth, they will treat you like a nuisance. When you hang them from the noose, let that burden go and burn it like they're the fat and you're the biggest loser. When you extend your arms to pray, don't stench your hopes with death. Stretch your hopes to play when the ocean waves its depth and the kindest thing to say when you're running out of breath is Amin. Amin. Don't you dare second guess. So that's the first um, piece. Um, so let's get to the short exercise. Now, one of the first things you learn as a poet, one of the first things you enjoy doing as a poet is giving inanimate objects people-like qualities or personifying the inanimate, inanimate object. Like you can pretend you're a chair or a fish or something. And then you give it a human-like quality, and now it becomes accessible. And sometimes you are asked, pretend you're a chair. How do you feel? What's the weather? What is your color? Are you made of wood or steel? And, and that exercise kind of gives you a different perspective, and it makes you project your feelings into this inanimate object. So the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is, with respect to the exercise that, we, that I asked you to think about, Name three people that are very important to you in your life. Three people that have changed your life. Living or unliving, real or fictional, you know or you don't know. Let's take um, maybe one more minute. Twenty more seconds, no pressure. Okay, now uh, name three places that are very important to you that have affected your life. These could be real places, fictional places, places you know, places you don't. It could be Hogwarts, it could be your school, whatever it is. Okay, let's take 10, 15 more seconds. All right, now, finally, three things that you would like to change about yourself. It could be something in your appearance, it could be a habit. It could be an incident you want to unlive. Whatever it is, something you'd like to change about yourself. Three things.
Okay, 10 more seconds. Okay, I think we're good. All right, now, the next part of the exercise is where the fun begins. Now, imagine you have uh, a bag of M&Ms, right? And you accidentally drop it. Three colors fall out of that bag. I want you to assign those three colors to three of the things that you wrote. One person, one place, and one thing you don't like about yourself. So for example, if I dropped my bag of M&Ms, I'd get red, yellow, and blue. My person is my father. So I'll choose blue to be my father. Yellow to be a school, and red to be my weight. Does that make sense? If you guys have your mic on, please mute. We will have time to share. Can everyone hear me well? Is there any problem? Okay, great. So to repeat the instruction again, and I'm gonna give you 20 more seconds. Assign each color of this M&M's bag. You drop three of them and each color assign it to one person, one place, and one thing that you'd like to change about yourself. You can do whatever you want with the colors. There's no instruction really um, specific as to how you can feel them. That's up to you. That's where you come in. I'm only giving you the frame. You color however you want. Don't worry about any details within the poem. The idea is that in 10, 15 minutes, I want you to imagine this emotion in a different way. Okay. I think we're good. Uh, okay. Now, after you've written all these things, whoever has three lines, can I have a volunteer to read his three lines or her three lines? Who has their camera open? Okay. I can just pick out. Hmm. Please raise your hand if you have three lines. Okay, I'm gonna have to pick. Don't test me. Okay, I'm gonna pick on people I know because they love me. Hi, Sabrina. <laughs> yeah, there's a few people who raised their hand as well. Oh, I didn't see them, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, I didn't see them. Okay, wait. Can you wait. see, or I don't know if you can see the, who who, I can see everybody whose camera's on, yes. Who uh, uh, raised their hand, can you see? So who raised their hand? I didn't see, I'm sorry. Check the participants, you should. I cannot, oh, on the thing, okay, I'm sorry. But I mean, whoever, I really didn't see it, I'm sorry. It's not very clear on my end. Yes, okay, Hannah, yes. Okay, so let me unmute you. Yes, thank you. Yes. Uh, I didn't raise my hand. <laughs> oh, well, you can share if you'd like. I think, but, that, but yeah, Ziad, it would be good to give an example because I think people. Okay, so let me start. That's yes, fine. Yes. That works. That works perfectly. Yeah. Okay, so my example 
was my father was blue, my school was yellow, and my weight was red. So, so I have to lines, add, uh, I add the verb to be because I didn't add the verbs to be. That's fine. Was, Take your time. Take your time. So um, let me, so let me give or, you my three lines, and then whoever has them, you can try and read. So my three lines are, yeah, my blue father walked into my yellow school and saw me float in red. Nice. These are my three lines. Right, I'll need um, to now, and yes. Okay, ah, uh, yes, give me a second, how to? Maimuna raised their hand. Yes, Maimuna raised their hand. Hi, everybody. Hi. This is Maimuna. Nice I have chosen uh, pink for my kids, the first line. The second line, I have chosen purple for the place. It's uh, Mecca. It's such a, uh, you know, a spiritual place. And uh, the third is yellow. My lifestyle, healthy lifestyle, I mean. Explain, I didn't get that. Uh, the healthy lifestyle, I mean, um, I want to do such more workouts and uh, stuck in, stick on, on it. And uh, also I have to eat more healthy and know when I have to take a nap on my day and not rush all the time. You know, slower my rashness. And let me ask you, why did you choose these particular colors, if I may? The colors you mean or do yes. you think? The colors. The pink is, you know, it's a, a very kind color. I feel it is very emotional one. Okay. To my kids. The purple is uh, for me, uh, it's uh, a wealthiness. And uh, I find myself wealthy when I really uh, feel connected with the God. And uh, the third one is uh, yellow. It's just for nourishment, you know. Okay, yeah. that makes perfect sense. That makes perfect sense. Thank you so much. Um, so the idea of yeah. that exercise, which was demonstrated right now, is that we project these emotions. We see these places or these people or this bad thing that we think is bad as a color. And when we see it as a color, it simplifies it. It sizes it up. Now this insecurity that is really scary is bite-sized. It's something that I can control. If I say my overweight body is red, now it's this big. It's not huge in my head. It doesn't keep me up at night. I'm not scared of talking to people because of it. Now it's this small. And I can write a poem about it. And I can put it in a paper and I can crumble up, throw it in the trash. It's as small as my hand. That's the point of this exercise. It minimizes this fear. And poetry has helped me overcome a lot of these fears. So uh, I wish I could have heard everyone, but I wish we had time for that, really. Um, so I'll read my poem, if you don't mind. Um, and the poem is gonna have three things. The object, or the person being my father as well, the place being the school, and the thing being my weight. But instead, I'm going to use a hot air balloon as an image. The hot air balloon being me. So the piece is called Hot Air Balloon. I float around the room. Hot air balloon. I sit in the classroom and wait for them to float closer to me. Wait for a smile to tear down the walls, for a handshake, for Pleasure is all mine. It's past nine and no one still approached. I sit on the bench closest to the board, far enough from the prettiest girls. I know the routine. I'm 13, but I'm not blind. The thing about being overweight, you take up too much space. You are liquid taking shape in whatever contained. You smile, take insult, swallow punches, because children are cruel. They threw insults in the purest forms in crude, but you were never raised to be rude. You digest the stares of strangers while having lunch. Sleep every night thinking which faces you would punch in the morning, but you've been raised better. Your mother did not raise a quitter. 
But she couldn't build dams inside your glands, so you flood on your pillow. The thing about my father is he never laid a hand on me, but when he did, he couldn't sleep till he healed the stars, and he raised me to believe in stars, to believe in good and evil, Disney ideals and wicked witches and beasts, colored M&Ms lost in the back car seats, and there I grew to a hot air balloon, room after room. Blue after blue, still contained but always bruised, still behaved, well-spoken and misconstrued. One day, they take you for a long walk, trace you, trace around your innocence with white chalk, wrap you up like a sandwich with a body bag ready to eat you, dispense you, disperse you, dismantle you, mishandle you. The thing about patience is when it runs out, you become nuclear bomb. One day they take it too far. They finally connect the dots on your scars. They finally see the monster you've kept hidden underneath. One day, my father threw his hands on me. There was an explosion. One day, 500 nights later, I recalled the names and the faces on the lists I've kept underneath my pillow tucked my fists out of my pockets and their faces became paper and my hands became pen and I wrote, Poetry, page after page, my favorite songs came rushing out, cage after cage, and I sang all my favorite lines, stage after stage, and one day, my father threw his hands on me. There was an explosion. He quickly rushed me to the sink, let the water run till his hands gave in, and my hands remembered to forgive. One day, and 500 nights later, I tugged my fists back into my pocket, floated back into the classroom like a hot air balloon wrapped in a cocoon found a paper and a pen screamed till my ink bled dry no one saw me cry that's the piece um thank you so much all right so uh, i think we have time for questions yes does anybody have any questions? Don't be shy. Let me ask you a question. And whoever is um, ready to share, please do. What do you think um, insecurities, how do you think insecurities hinder us from achieving our dreams? How do you think an insecure, has an insecurity ruined an opportunity for you? Yes, yes, I saw a hand. <laughs> Did you hesitate? Daniel? Yes. Yes. Has an, has has, yes, has an insecurity ruined an opportunity for you? Uh, money money um but it's it's often the insecurities of others that have the greatest effect on me explain and when i learn so i've I told you this story before about so one of the people that i wrote about was the principal of my school and as a teacher i understand how it can be difficult to express yourself as an individual within the classroom and the story that he told us was the insecurity that he lived with. And to cover up that insecurity, he grew a beard. And the beard was to cover a scar that he received on his first day of school. So in Ireland, there wasn't, it wasn't common to go to boarding school, but he did. And three boys from his class smelled the fear within him. Stabbed him in the, th in the, th in the throat with a pool cue and gave him a scar along his jawline. And instead of talking about the insecurity and the scar, he covered it up with a beard. So because of somebody being able to talk about their insecurities, whether it be a scar and something that is everlasting, it doesn't matter whether you can see the insecurity or not, it will always be there. It's just to find and be able to extract that insecurity from somebody. Wow. So, that's 
That's this is the second time I hear it, and I, I'm still blown away. Um, that's insane. There's so, some questions in the chat. Uh, yes, yeah. yes, I can. Yes, give me. A, I'm really bad with technology. I'm really sorry. Where is it? Wait. Let me find that. Yes. Okay. So. Um, what inspires me to write? Um, usually it's an event that happens in my life, for example. Um, it could be as simple as meeting a new friend, having a good meal, taking a good walk. It could be from that to traveling, moving places, or going to a concert, or anything that's very memorable, or something that's very minute as just having a good meal. Um, and usually the same way I used colors and places and people to create and simplify emotion. You can do the same thing with the most simple event or the most complicated event. So um, to give you an example, when this poem is about bullying, the one that I read to you about me being a hot air balloon, I was a very overweight child. I was 105 at 10 years old. So I looked like Snorlax, genuinely. Um, and I floated in. It's not a euphemism. <laughs> and um, that was met with a lot of, obviously, comedy and bullying. And so that poem is how I fight my own insecurity about my weight, but also reflect on a place, which is the school, what it represented to me. My father never laid hands on me except once. And from him, I learned to hold my patience, to hold my anger which is expressed in this poem. And so it's a combination of the bullying I got in school, the way I was raised, and the way I looked. So it's the three things that I discussed. Um, when Dania asked, when did you feel comfortable enough to share your poetry? Ooh, okay. It took a lot of encouragement. My best friend took me to an open mic in Abu Dhabi in 2015, and only he swore he would take the stage with me if I took it. So it took a lot of support. It took a community and it took, uh, it, I was terrified. I was stuttering, I was sweating, I was losing my mind. But because of how much fun and how much energy I had, and how, because that's anxiety, that's nervousness. It's potential energy in your body. And if you know any physics, you know that potential energy changes to kinetic energy. Stored changes to movement. If your anxiety can be, charged up well enough, it can turn into energy on stage, volume, movement, vocab. And yeah, yes, of course, Hannah, I can. Yes, please send it to me and I would love to review the poem. Uh, but let's do it in a later time, perhaps. I would love to. Um, yes, anything else? Um, if there isn't any more questions, and we still have some time, uh, I don't know if you guys, do you want to hear another poem from Ziad? Mm. Give me a thumbs up in the camera or in the chat if you want to hear another poem. We'll do No a questions at all? Are you sure? <laughs> More than me? We'll like that. Oh, yes, yeah, I know <laughs> it wasn't in the plan, Yanni. But I yes, think yes. a lot of people want to hear if you're okay. up for it. If you're up for it. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, okay, it's just let me... Um, Take your okay. time. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Zia, take one yes. from your book. I actually don't have a copy of my book. I gave them all away. <laughs> but yes, I will. Um, I will share one uh, that I wrote um, recently. Um, it was right here. Okay, so it's called Somewhere. Um, or I can do something actually, you know what? Let's let's improvise. Let's let's. There's another just... question from Mesem also in the chat. Yes. <laughs> okay, so I'll give you a really short story uh, about how an insecurity of mine turned into something really funny, um, and that's I think is a big success. My first performance on stage, September 15, 2015. I get on stage. The poem I perform is about social anxiety. I stutter. It's, 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 it's so much 
that the people watching think that it's a part of the act. So after I finished, they clapped really hard. Like they just saw Tom Hanks perform. Bro, I was nervous. That wasn't uh, me pulling an act. I was there. So after I finished, three people came. Oh my God, you're stuttering. It was so real. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, because it was real. I was terrified. And that's how, and that's a very small example of how you can turn an insecurity into a really, really good kind of twist into a performance, into a stunt, into a punchline, into something that when the crowd watches, they immediately get that. Um, but for example, that insecurity has led to me building up confidence. And that was the change because that first loss led to a victory. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that kind of told me, okay, you can do this. Uh, I don't know if that answers your question, but I hope it does. Um, Ah, yes, that's a really good question. So what do you advise during these difficult times and how to deal with insecurities, especially while the world's going through a pandemic? Incredible question. Because, because we're stuck at home, we're dealing with ourselves 24-7. And if you're not as lucky as I am with my family around me, some people live alone and they have to actually live alone for a while. I can tell you, Try to take a f try to, to walk around the house every now and then. I know it's like 57,000 degrees in Oman, I know. But can, you know, try to take a walk around sunset, even if it's 20 minutes, get some fresh air, write, run, draw, watch something that makes you laugh. Call a friend that you, you can really speak your heart to. When the worst comes to worst, watch friends. Sometimes it works. Um, do you think being overconfident is a form of insecurity? Hmm. I actually don't know. That's a really good question. Um, that's a really good question. Huh. I don't know because I'm not, I'm not an overconfident person. I'm actually an underconfident person. Um, but I think arrogance, um, I think if that's what you mean, arrogance, I think it's an attempt to cover up an insecurity. That's maybe what I think. I think someone who's being super, super arrogant is someone who's trying to hide the things they're really scared of. So maybe, yeah, it does. Yeah, it, it always works. That's true. <laughs> That's true. So fake it till you make it like this. Um, yes. So I think, do I have time to perform? Okay. okay. Yes. So this piece has nothing to do with insecurity. It's just something that I like to perform. It's a piece that I like to... To, to, to perform when I introduce myself. It's called Anna. I think Noor and Daniel have heard it. And Sabrina. أنا لست ما تعتاده الأقلام أنا وأعوذ بالله من كلمة أنا أنا ما دمت وما بقي وما زال على عهد الهوى I am not what a pen can endure. I'm not what your parameters can secure. I'm not the simple definitions or the complex brochures. I am storm, stirred within a breeze, gentle as the ocean debris. Anna, anna qalbun khafaqun fi dunya al aswar, kalbun sarikhun yuqid al naima min rafut al ashari. I am 5 a.m. stalling for breath, not counting backwards from 10. I am the streets of Cairo, noisy and doubtful. More than just a mouthful of prison cells and obituaries, cold and a handful of hands containing hope and sanctuaries, old, but proud and ironic. I think that's enough. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, there's a couple of questions I'll answer very quickly because I feel like... Yes. Yes, yes. What will be your advice? Oh, so how to be strong, is that your question? Um, how to be strong, man, you guys are asking the wrong person. I eat lunch at 3 a.m. If that's strength, then that's that. Uh, <laughs> uh, but really, um, no, I think the only thing I can leave you with, really, is take your time to process exactly how you feel. Process your emotion in whichever way possible. The point of this conversation we're having is just I use poems to process how I feel. If I'm sad, if I'm exhausted, if I'm lonely, 
I put them in images, I use colors, I use places, I use just visual, but words. That's my thing. Other people might have a different idea. Other people might like to run. They might like to talk. They might like to watch TV. They might like to cook. Cooking is amazing. It's really therapeutic. Uh, play, uh, you know, yoga sometimes helps. But I think it differs from person to person. So long as you give yourself a chance to really feel what you feel and admit it to yourself. I think that's it. Thank you so Thank much. You so much. Dad. That was wonderful. Um, I don't know if everyone wants to un unmute. I'm going to unmute everyone again and give a round of applause for Ziad. So in uh, three, two, there's some people still. Three, two, one. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Before we finish, um, we, uh, I'm going to hand it off because it's our half birthday. Our main organizer, the person who came up with the idea of opening uh, Creative Mornings Mecca, May and Wehebi, uh, to introduce our local sponsors. Good morning, hello, everyone. I think some of you already know me, some of you maybe have never even met me before. I'm the main organizer or the host of Creative Mornings Mecca chapter. And the story behind Creative Mornings goes way back before, I mean, we have, this, we have now six sessions, we have done six sessions, so six months, but the work, the whole work have started six months before the first session, so maybe in July or in August. And um, before even thanking our local sponsors, I would love to thank our great volunteers, the team that worked so hard behind screens and have been doing amazing job so far and the guys who have started with me since August Noor uh, who has been I'm, I'm seeing the whole sessions um, Al Ghaif, Laif, Noor, Manar, Manar, Abdurrahman, Uthman, Fatma, all of Daniel I don't want to forget Daniel of course um, thank you so much you guys uh, you've been the greatest support and some of our actually uh, videographers, volunteers, I can see some here. Um, thank you so much, guys. And maybe uh, a big, big, big thank you, Abdul Rahman. Thank you to uh, our local sponsors, uh, the people who have believed on us, like from day one. I remember going to the National Youth Commission and just speaking with Dr. Samuel Kharousi, telling them about the, uh, the idea, the basic idea. And he believed on us from day one. We got the sponsorship for the whole year. And then uh, Umk Production, who have been also our greatest support. They have provided us with all the graphics that you guys have been seeing, the videos and everything. So we have here uh, Maymuna Luhebi. Uh, if you can unmute yourself, Maymuna. Maymuna Luhebi, Naibat Rais Lejna al Watania al Shabab. But خبرنا شوية كيف برامج اللجنة تعزز الثقة في الشباب. تفضلي ميمونة. الله تعالى وبركاته جميعاً. We are really proud of you, Samia, على the initiatives اللي جالسة تقدميها. اللجنة الوطنية للشباب طبعاً أغلبكم يعرف أنها تأسست مرسوم سلطاني وفيها كثير من المشاريع اللي تخدم الشباب. برامج استراتيجية أساسية خماسية يعني كل خمس سنوات تتغير فأنا كل فترة أعضاء تبقى سنتين فخلال الأربع نحن we stick to our strategic plans يعني فاللي هي المواطنة والانتماء التمكين الاقتصادي تطوير قدرات الشباب وتطوير القطاع الشبابي طبعا كل هذه عبارة عن ورش عمل أنشطة ابتعاثات خارج السلطنة كل ما يخدم الشباب في مختلف المجالات بلس في عندنا دعم للمبادرات مثل هذه المبادرة الجميلة من الوقت سمية فهذا بحد ذاته يعطي ثقة للشباب نحن عندنا أربع أنواع من الدعم الدعم المالي، الدعم المعرفي، الدعم اللوجستي وهو عن طريق مثلا الشاب إذا عنده أي تصور وحاب هو يقدمه لأي وزارة أو أي مؤسسة في القطاع الخاص 
في كل ما عليه يجي عندنا او يرسل ايميل للرساله ونحن نبعثها باسم اللجنه الوطنيه وايضا ممكن نقدم دعم عن طريق الميديا او الاعلام كل هذا توقع يعطي الشباب طابع ان نحن دائما مؤمنين فيهم وفي قدراتهم ودائما نعتني انه يكون في فرايتي في المشاريع وتنوع كبير يشمل كل الجوانب الجوانب النفسيه العلميه التكنولوجيه فنحاول ان دائما نعطي الفرص لجميع المستويات والاعمار والتوزيع الجغرافي ف كل التوفيق ان شاء الله الشيء يمكن الفتره الاخيره خاصه في فتره فيروس كورونا يعني اللجنه اسرعت انه تدعم الكثير من المشاريع اللي كانت موجهه بس لهالفتره سواء كان دعم نفسي بحثي وغيره معرفي يعني بشكل عام ف يو جايز ار فيري فيري يعني بيج بيج ثانك يو تو يو اند تو اول ذا بيبل هو هاف بين وركينج وذ اس سينس داي 1 فروم ذا ناشونال يوث كوميشن شكرا ميمونه uh, ونحب نشكر بعد معانا خالد اليوم خالد العبري موجود خالد او حد من عمق موجود خالد يحضر معانا من اول سيشن واحد اكبر الداعمين بس شكل اليوم ما موجود اني anyway, uh, بالنيابه عن uh, خالد يمكن عبد الرحمن عبد الرحمن العبري اهلا وسهلا خبرنا شويه عن عمق عبد الرحمن والله مشكورين uh, اول شيء على دعمكم آه، عمق طبعا دائما آه، تدعم آه، مثل هذه المبادرات ونحب انه نشارك المجتمع آه، باي قدر او شيء حتى شيء البسيط اللي ممكن نقدمه سواء آه، دعم معنوي او حتى استشارات او حتى اعمال بسيطه ممكن انه احنا نعملها طبعا احنا بعدنا الحين شركه صغيره ناشئه ونحاول قدر الامكان انه آه، نعطي المجتمع يعني قرر كبير من الأعمال الفنية والأعمال اللي تخدم قطاع المجال الفني بشكل عام ودائما نشجع على مثل فعاليات ومبادرات كريت المون وحاضرين في أي وقت إن شاء الله شكرا عبد الرحمن وشكرا كبير لخالد ولعبد الملك بعد I think something that just just I want to add before we wrap up this up Um, if any of you is interested in supporting Creative Mornings Matkal chapter, please get in touch with us. Um, one of my volunteers, one of the team will write our email here in the uh, chat box. So you can reach out to us if you want to support our chapter uh, financially, uh, with your skills, with your abilities, with your insecurities, with anything that you would like to contribute to us. We will be more than glad to have you. Um, you can also reach out in our social media accounts, um, PM underscore Masqat in Twitter and Instagram. And I, did anyone write? Yeah. I, so, okay. You have our email here or no one? Okay. Can anyone write our email in the uh, chat box, Masqat at creativemornings.com? You can reach out anytime uh, to us. And if you know any of our team members, you can also reach out to them. And they will definitely connect you to the host. And yeah, thank you so much. That's all for me. If Noor wants to add anything before we go. Thank you so much for coming, everyone. Uh, we hope to see you at our next session. Follow our Instagram and Twitter to find out more about next month's session, we, which we'll be announcing in uh, less than a few weeks. So thank you for, so much for having us. Have a great Friday. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next time. And thank you, Ziad. Bye, everyone.